Uh, we we're going to get started, and we can get uh, started with uh, introductions left to right. Uh, Vice Chair of the Board of Police Commissioner, Annie Holt, at large. Brian Ferguson, Chairman of the Board of Police Commissioner, District 1. Melissa Gardner, Commanding Officer for Downtown Services and 3rd Precinct. Franklin Hayes, Deputy Chief. Charles Fitzgerald, Assistant Chief. Tiffany Stewart, Deputy Chief. Rashad Sims, Deputy Chief. All right, again, good afternoon. Uh, we're here to provide an update on the shooting that happened last night in the area of Washington and Michigan Avenue uh, near the Weston Hotel. Uh, there were four victims, all males between the ages of 20 and 30 years old. Uh, they all suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, at this stage in a preliminary investigation, and again, this is subject to change because the investigation is active, uh, we know that we have two groups that uh, we're having some type of conflict with, you, with each other, who have uh, met up earlier in the night at another location, uh, which we're not gonna disclose at this point. Uh, we're working on getting some uh, search warrants up uh, to get some, some video uh, from that location. Uh, but they met up at a previous location, uh, had some type of conflict, uh, moved from that location uh, at separate times uh, to the secondary location where the incident occurred. Uh, we also believe uh, that the vehicle in question that you're going to see here in a moment was waiting uh, for uh, the victims to arrive uh, several minutes prior to their arrival uh, and parking across the street. Uh, let me say that this incident uh, is directly uh, attributed to the conflict uh, that they are having with each other. It has nothing to do with the hotel, uh, no visitors at the hotel, uh, no businesses located in the hotel and not the hotel itself. Uh, we had a strong police presence last night, and we continue to have a, a, a strong presence in this area. In fact, the officers uh, were there, heard the shots, uh, and was in that area uh, so close, in fact, that they ended up uh, conveying uh, at least three of the victims uh, to the hospital uh, after they were shot. Uh, they also uh, applied tourniquets uh, to the, off or to the uh, victims. Uh, and likely uh, saving at least one of the victim's lives uh, by providing uh, that tourniquet and getting them to the hospital. I want to make sure uh, that I thank those officers for their hard work. Uh, this shooting is, is another example of just the senseless violence. You know, senseless violence all over the country, all over the city, uh, fighting arguments that, that are ending in gunfire for, for no good reason. I will say uh, that is my area that I live in. Uh, I heard the commotion early this morning before getting the notification. Uh, you know, we don't want a, a drive-by shooting to happen anywhere in the city. Uh, certainly we don't want uh, our neighborhoods targeted, uh, but if someone chooses uh, to do a drive-by shooting in that area, uh, I am confident we're going to make an arrest. That area is filled with cameras, uh, so if there's any place uh, that they wanted to do it, uh, they're helping the police and making a decision to do it there because we're gonna pull every asset that we have together and we're going to be deploying, uh, making sure that we get this violent felon off the street before they hurt anyone else. Um, with that, um, we're gonna roll some video here uh, and you're gonna see a couple of scenes. Again, the officers uh, immediately assessed the situation, saw that we had four victims uh, and began uh, administering first aid uh, could not be prouder of them. That is what our officers do. Uh, they immediately flip into that life-saving mode uh, and, and get folks help. And, and that's, uh, you know, something that uh, should not go unnoticed. But with that, let's move to the video. Uh, and to provide you some background, uh, you're going to see the suspect vehicle and you're also going to see the victim's vehicle uh, as it pulls up. And this is, in fact, the victim's, uh, I believe this is the victim's vehicle.
have an angle on the suspect's vehicle, a secondary angle. And as you can see, the scout car is right there. They're right on the corner uh, after the incident happens on patrol. And they actually heard the shots. I'm going to go back to that last uh, frame. Uh, and this is what we're working with. And if you can stop it at that vehicle. So that's, as you can see, that vehicle's moving pretty fast, and that's what we're working with. Good news is um, there are a lot of camera assets uh, and other opportunities to identify that vehicle in that area and their pathway, uh, and that's what we're working through now with our detectives uh, to see uh, the, the path of escape uh, and to track that path of escape and identify that vehicle. But if anyone in the community knows who that is, we're asking that they assist us. If anyone saw that plate, saw that vehicle leaving the area around uh, midnight this morning, uh, we would ask that you notify the Detroit Police Department um, and give us the uh, information that you have. If anyone knows the suspect, please contact us. We will be relentless in our pursuit of the suspect. Uh, we've got our detectives working right now in our own the ground, uh, and we will not stop until we get this person in custody before they strike again, uh, it, plain and simple. Uh, so with that, we will take any questions. Chief uh, Grant Herbs from Channel 4. Are the four victims in this cooperating with the investigation right now? And then we were told there was a fifth person who was in that SUV who then ran away. Have they been found yet? Well, we're, we're looking at that. Um, I heard that. I don't know where you got your information, but we, we, I've heard that. We haven't confirmed it. Um, as far as cooperation, a couple of them in surgery. Uh, they're you know, severely injured, but they're expected to live, but they're still severely injured. So I don't know about the level of cooperation. Um, we're talking to everybody, witnesses, um, and also, you know, we uh, recovered a number of weapons from the, the victims' vehicles as well. Uh, one of the, the victims is a Detroiter. The other three are from outside the city, uh, and we recovered, I believe, three, three or four, yes, three weapons, three weapons uh, out, uh, from that vehicle, from the uh, victims' vehicle. Hi, Chief. Uh, Whitney Bernie from Channel 7. Just a couple quick questions. Um, is there any idea how many shots were fired? Obviously, there are multiple that could be seen in the victim's vehicle. Yeah, um, we don't know uh, the answer to that yet. Um, we've got, you know, people shot multiple times, but we don't know if they're through and through. Uh, there's some things that we're looking into. We, we're not prepared to give that answer yet, um, but we know there was multiple shots fired. Okay, uh, second question is, uh, downtown has obviously been known as a pretty safe space over the last several years, but now we've had a couple of different shootings. Is there any concern about the optics of that and, and people being concerned about their safety now in downtown Detroit? Yeah, I mean, you know, the optics uh, or, or, or downtown, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about the whole city. Um, but as I indicated, that's my neighborhood. I live down the street from, from the incident occurring. and. You know, I want to be safe, too. Um, this is an unusual area for something like that to happen in. Um, you know, uh, but again, I mean, I, I, I'm very disappointed that happened. But if it was going to happen anywhere, uh, it happened at a place that gives me a higher level of confidence of, of, of being able to, to close the case because of all of the cameras and opportunities to, to find out who the suspect is in that, in that area in and around downtown. Um, you know, downtown's uh, pretty lit up with cameras. and. Uh, business owners and uh, a number of other folks that have them, uh, property owners, uh, so and they're all cooperating with us, so we're going to be able uh, to get what we need uh, to, to, to uh, close this case. Uh, I still think downtown is very safe, and, you know, when you, I look at the data every single day, and, um, you know, when, when you look at the data, you know, you see crime all over the city, 
uh, and you know that's always a concern and we want to reduce crime and uh, you know we we've managed to do that but uh, it's not good enough when you have things like this happening so uh, I still think downtown is safe I'm, I'm not moving and um, uh, you know but this is a, a, a sad situation and uh, unfortunate situation and a situation where people are using guns to, to solve simple disputes everybody's got a gun and you know we, we're gonna do what we can to constitutionally get them off the street because if you don't you have situations like this with no regard for anyone in the community or someone could get hurt that doesn't have anything to do with the incident that happened there so uh, it's got my full attention my focus and constitutionally we're gonna get these these illegal weapons off the street and these people who carry them and then just for clarity do you guys believe that the victims were staying at the hotel or that was just a completely random location I believe it was random we know right now where they were prior to this again uh, I want to make sure we get our search warrants executed um, before I talk too much um, but I think they just happened to stop there and that's when this uh, transpired unfortunately thank you mm -hmm. all right thank you very much